Vice President Nixon arrives in Venezuela, last stop on his South American tour. Awaiting him, another of the well-planned campaign embarrassment that have marred every step of his way. But he and Mrs. Nixon arrive smiling. Despite what has gone before, despite their knowledge, they'll be targets for another communist spark on plot. The cat-calling mob is kept at bay at the airport as the Nixons enter their cars. Closed cars for the first time on this trip. A precaution that perhaps saves their lives, for the Caracas outbreak exceeds the darkest expectations. Motorcade stops for traffic. The mob catches up and attacks the cars with stones and clubs. Mr. and Mrs. Nixon are spat upon and reviled, while an inadequate police guard sits by, helping them. The car itself testifies to the savagery of the mob. At the U.S. Embassy, there is respite. Venezuelan leaders make their apologies, but the tour is cut short. With a heavy cordon of troops screening the route the next day, the Nixons return to the airport and bid farewell to anguished hosts. Maximum security is the order of the day. American Marines had been rushed to nearby Caribbean bases in case Venezuela could not keep order, but the leave-taking was without incident. at Washington, D.C., quite a different reception awaited. A cheering crowd of nearly 10,000 is on hand. Students, diplomats, government and congressional figures, and in a rare airport appearance, Ike himself. It's a spontaneous acclamation on a scale almost unrivaled for any dignitary in the past. An ovation greets Mr. and Mrs. Nixon, a nonpartisan gesture of sympathy for their ordeal and of appreciation for their courage and bearing as representatives of our country. Following the president's personal welcome, the vice president comments on his tour. But may I say that, as the president just emphasized, while there were incidents, incidents in which a very small, violent, vocal minority were able to enlist the support of some innocent people who were misled as to what U.S. motives really were, while those incidents occurred. I can tell you that from my observations in each one of the countries we visited, that the great majority of the people, the great majority in all walks of life, are friendly to the United States today. And this is true of every one of the countries. Triumphal procession to the White House followed. Triumphal, for despite the vehemence of leftist attacks, the communist agitators betrayed themselves by their work. Triumphal, for despite red vituperation, the Nixons made many new threats for America. The route is lined with an estimated 100,000 government workers and just plain citizens who cheer the Nixons to the echo. Arrival at the White House marks the end of a turbulent journey that will help set America on a new and truer course in foreign policy.